Good morning, everyone. I'm here to film a review uh, overview for chapter one of Word. This is basically basic document formatting, um, basic word processing terminology, really introductory stuff. So I've got some slides and I have a Word file open so that we can actually do the stuff in the program. So let's get started. You'll see my screen pop up in a moment. I'm going to share my whole desktop so that I can uh, jump from the slides to the document that I have open. You'll see that in my document, um, I have just put in a bunch of text. This is lorem ipsum, which is um, like filler Latin, <laughs> just so that I have some text for you to actually look at when we do some of this formatting stuff. Okay. Let's get started. So the modules, if you're in a Pearson course for this, are modules two to four. If you're in ITC, um, the word module is module three. Um, yeah. So as I said, we're going to be going over kind of basic document organization settings um, and some basic word processing terminology. Um, if you are in Pearson, these kind of topics were gleaned from your um, quizzes, the, the little yellow, orangey, pointy finger activities. Um, those are not for marks, but if you do want to fill them in to test your knowledge afterwards, uh, go right ahead. So before you start this, you'll want to have already watched the intro to office video, which goes over some basic office stuff, um, as well as my intro to word tour and demo, um, where I give a very brief um, overview of the entire program and all the major tabs on the ribbon. All right. So what is word processing uh, and word processing software? So word processing is, um, or word processors um, are computer applications uh, like Word, and they are used to create and edit and format text. Okay, so text is the primary, it's the bulk of the content, um, it's text. Okay, it's writing. So other programs other than Microsoft Word, um, OpenOffice has a program writer, um, WordPad, Notepad, uh, WordPerfect is an old one, um, or uh, Pages on Google. Ribbon. So if you saw the intro videos already, you'll know that the ribbon is the screen component at the top of the window. Um, it is divided out into tabs and then each tab has buttons separated out into little sections um, so that you can access the tools and utilities for creating and configuring your documents. So the ribbon, again, it's at the top of the screen. There will be the home tab first and then insert, design, layout, um, all the other ones. The ribbon is different in each of the office programs as far as what's on them, but there are some kind of commonalities that will um, always bring you through. If you learn Word first, you are in a great position to then use both PowerPoint and Excel um, because they're all kind of designed uh, in the same way. All right. There are several different ways that you can display your document while you're editing it um, or just when you want to read it, I guess. So the first way, the default is called print layout view. And I've made a little um, icon here <laughs> uh, with some clip art um, to basically look like what the icon looks like. So you can either change the view from the view tab self-explanatory, or um, at the bottom left corner of the window, you'll see some icons there um, and you can change the view from that section as well. So print layout view, it's what you're used to. It looks like a page, it's page sized. You can see your margins. Um, I usually turn on my ruler, um, standard. Web layout view, and again, I've made a kind of facsimile of the, um, icon here. Um, web layout view makes uh, changes the way that margins work, basically. So it displays the document as if it's on a web page, meaning that the kind of line length and things is uh, dependent on the window size instead of a page size. Um, again, accessed in all the same places. And I will show you these in the program in a moment so you can see the difference. 
Then we've got outline view. This is one that I use more often. Um, and this is a view where it separates the document. So there, there's no formatting kind of present um, other than basic text formatting. And it shows you your document um, as an outline in a structured kind of way. So you can see your titles, your headers, um, each paragraph and kind of move things around, uh, grab them and drag it around so you can reorder your information. The easiest way to make an outline in Word is to use styles, which we'll be talking about in chapter two. Um, it will automatically create an outline for you, um, which can make your life a lot easier, especially on larger documents. And we have draft view. Um, this looks fairly similar to web layout view. Um, it has lots of space. The, there's no um, kind of formatting features or page features like margins, headers, and footers. Um, it's just the text. It's just a lot of text space. Um, so that is for if obviously this is text only, you don't really have um, any kind of visual component to your work that you're doing. Um, you just want to be able to access the text. So draft view would be a good option for that. Then you've got read mode. This um, kind of looks similar to web mode. Um, it also kind of resizes the text, um, but it makes the text like narrow so it's all like in the center you have actually a, a good amount of white space on either side and the idea is that it makes it easier to read because it's broken up um and you'll see as well in the read mode that the kerning is increased kerning is the space between uh letters symbols numbers etc the space between characters um and so that will be increased as well so there's just a lot of space uh, visual space around um to assist in easy reading um, this mode also has a text-to-speech function, so you can make the computer read to you, uh, which is always kind of fun, um, but it also means, of course, that it's more accessible. All right, before I get into the rest of it, I'm going to switch into the Word program here and show you those different views. So here we are. The standard view, as I said, is page layout, print layout, <laughs> print layout view. Um, and you can see down the bottom here, there's the basic one. So there's print layout, web, outline, and um, either draft or read. I think that's draft. Um, so this is print layout view. If you go to the view tab, okay, you've got the different uh, ways of showing it. Then you have your reading mode. This is to make it dark. Um, <laughs> yeah nicer on your eyes. And I always have my ruler turned on. Okay. You can also turn on grid lines if you're doing something um, where you need to like organize layout. Um, I don't use that very often. I do use navigation pane a lot because it shows you the thumbnail of the, of the page. So you can get a really good visual. And if you've used styles, um, the outline will automatically appear here, which I find really useful. And if you're doing any um, revisions, you have a, a record of that as well. So love the navigation pane. All right, let's actually look at these different views. So we're in print layout. Here's web. Okay. Now, if I make my uh, window smaller, you can see the margin is now based on the size of the window. Um, and it will resize the text length, the length of the line to fit um, how I've set up my window. So if I make this longer again, um, it's gonna refit to that, okay? Which is what happens online, right? So that can be really useful um, if you're trying to do a draft for online. Then you've got outline, um, which right now looks pretty unexciting because I haven't used styles. So it's all just body text. But you can choose here, you can uh, change the level or the style um, of the item, or you can collapse and see only certain lines. When we do styles, I'll show you this again, and we'll have a look at it um, with a bit more detail. I'm going to close the outline view. Go back to my view tab. Next one's draft. Oop. And it looks like this. <laughs> so. Um, as you can see, it's basically just the whole thing. There's no margins, um, there's no real formatting, but it is fit 
to um, how much I've zoomed it. So I can increase the zoom like this um, down in the bottom, or of course, using these sections, zoom to 100% perhaps. Um, but there you are. It, so it looks a bit smaller um, than the regular print view um, and everything's kind of shoved to one side. You can see where my ruler ends and then I just have all this empty emptiness. Um, focus view, we didn't talk about because um, <laughs> it looks like this. It's, <laughs> I hate it. Um, it's basically just a full screen, like zoom in. Um, yeah. And you can use focus on any of these views. And then there's immersive reader, which looks like this. So as I said, it's real skinny. Um, although I, can you change it? Yeah, you can manually adjust it. It looks like, um, not that it listened, but here you can see how much space there is right between the letters and between the words. Um, and the idea is that this is easier to read. Um, it's in Latin right now, so I don't know <laughs> how easy that is, but there we go. Um, and you can really do the text spacing. You can change the page color here, which can make it more accessible to have. Oh my goodness, just saw huge gust of snow come down. Amazing. Um, so you can change like the page color, make it a little easier, either higher or lower contrast. Um, and then here you can um, do the column width as well. So I can make it big old, wide one, moderate, um, and so on. Okay. And then to get out of here, you just close it. Gosh, this looks silly. Okay, let's uh, put it back to print layout. And you can see I've messed with my margins at some point. Just going to put that back to uh, like 16 and a half. That's where it usually is. Oh, never mind. I need to actually do the full. Boop, 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 boop. Here we go. Oops. Aha. Beautiful. All right. Back to the slides. So um, an insertion point. Your insertion point is the flashing bar um, in front of your text. So you know when you click on an empty space, you get that flashing line. Or if you're typing, there's a flashing line that's kind of going in front of everything you type. That's your insertion point. So this can be for typing, but it also for if you're going to insert an object like a picture, um, it will appear where your insertion point is. Word wrap is an automatic feature in Word. Um, you don't, you're not going to access it anywhere. It's just there. Um, and this is because on typewriters, when you got to the end of a line, you had to crank it and push it back to the beginning. Um, so word wrap is the feature that simply automatically moves you to the next line. So you don't have to press enter or anything like that. It'll just do it automatically for you. I mentioned characters briefly when I was showing you the read mode where they've got everything spaced out so much, right? Um, so a character is each individual uh, text element. So that could be a letter, a number, a symbol, a punctuation mark, a space, um, anything. Basically, if there's a key for it and you can type it, it's probably a character. So each individual one. So then if I was looking at, you know, the word character, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters in it. Um, so all of these are characters, each individual item. So you customize characters, obviously, by changing the size, the font that you're using, um, the spacing between, which again, I said is called kerning, um, and the case. So it can be uh, all caps, small caps, um, cap, uh, What's the other one? Sentence case, lowercase, obviously, um, and so on. So what's a non-printing character? Um, first of all, again, I put a little facsimile of the uh, button there. So a non-printing character, I almost always have this turned on while I'm editing um, because it lets you know what kind of white space is present. So it shows you if you've pressed enter or if you've pressed tab or space. So you really know what's going on. Um, this is especially helpful uh, when you end up with like a weird blank page and you don't know why. If you turn on your non-printing characters, you'll see exactly what spaces are taking up that blank page that, and you can remove them. Um, 
yeah, non-printing characters. So I always have these turned on there in the um, paragraph section. This button is in the paragraph section on the home ribbon. So here's a couple examples of non-printing characters um, and what they look like. So spaces are represented by a dot, um, soft returns, which is like when you press enter and shift at the same time. So it um, is a new line, but it doesn't change format and it doesn't have like the paragraph spacing. Um, hard returns, which is obviously just pressing enter, tabs and section breaks, page breaks, et cetera, um, which say break in the middle. <laughs> There's also what's called special characters, and these are characters that um, are either not available on the keyboard or have extra formatting information attached to them. So um, kind of like symbols, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, these are accessed via the insert tab and the symbol button, which looks like the omega symbol. Um, the ones that you use most in, um, let me just hide that. The ones that you use most in uh, the Pearson course would be the non-breaking characters and um, occasionally uh, some symbols. So what is a non-breaking character? It means that it overrides the word wrap feature. So um, for example, let's say you have someone's name and their first name is on one line and then it doesn't fit. So the second name is on a new line and you don't like that. You want the name to be together. So you could put a non-breaking space between the names, between your first name and your surname, and then it would go all together onto one line. So it wouldn't break over the word wrap. Okay. Um, you can also do this with hyphens, non-breaking hyphens, um, and so on. Okay. Sometimes you can insert these as hotkeys. You can also usually set up hotkeys for these special characters. So symbols are just simply characters that are not on your keyboard. Okay. And so special characters, some of them are kind of like symbols. Some of them are on your keyboard, but they have that extra formatting element to them. So like extra qualities. The symbol button, as I mentioned, looks like the omega sign, which is up the top there in gray. And this is located on the insert tab. Um, examples of symbols, copyright, uh, trademark. Um, I've got a little, <laughs> like, um, what are they called? The card symbol. My brain's just like emptied itself out entirely. Uh, one of those little card symbols looks like clover. Um, got a degree symbol, um, lots of stuff. So if it's not on the keyboard, it's probably in symbol. And you can get more symbols and special characters if you change the font within the symbol window. And we have breaks. So breaks are inserted from either the insert or layout tab. Okay, you have options there. Um, I always insert page breaks with my hotkey, which is control or command enter, depending on your uh, operating system. Column breaks self-explanatory, those happen automatically when you do columns, but then you can add a column break so that like sections start at the area that you like. Section breaks, um, there's several different kinds. So you have the option of um, having different formatting in these different sections, um, or whether you want it to be labeled as a new section for the e-reader, but you want it to have the same formatting. So you have a bunch of options there that you can include. If you have your non-breaking, uh, non- <laughs> <laughs> non-printing characters turned on, then you'll be able to see your breaks um, within the document. Auto recover. So this is a feature um, that allows you to recover, of course, hence auto recover. So retrieve perhaps, uh, save, um, rescue <laughs> a previous version. So um, let's say your computer dies, runs out of battery, and you were working on something. When you turn back on and you reopen the program, it's going to say um, your recent changes were saved. Would you like to see them? Would you want to look at it? Um, you'll say yes, and it'll pull up an auto-recovered version. So it'll have um, everything it's been saving on your behalf, and then you can choose whether to save it or not. Um, yeah, I have my auto recover set to go every like 10 minutes. Um, cause I am paranoid. <laughs> if you have auto save on, um, then you probably don't need auto recover, but auto save 
is not my favorite. And reason being um, is that it saves to cloud to the cloud storage. So I like to save things to my actual computer and then um, change and transfer things either to um, cloud or to my hard drive for external storage. Um, if you're happy with having your documents saved to OneDrive and SharePoint, then you can just use the autosave feature. Um, again, you can choose like how often it happens and that kind of thing. Um, and it will just save automatically. So you'll always have the most recent version of whatever you've done. Um, whether you want it to save that change or not, it will do so and it will save it to your cloud. Um, I do have, by the way, a video on how to download documents from the online office. So if you've saved it with autosave and you've saved it to online and you need to then get a copy of that file, um, I have a video demo for that. Autocorrect. This is something most people are familiar with from their phones. And essentially, it's um, an extension of the dictionary where if you make a misspelling or, you know, some kind of typo um, that is kind of predictable, it will predict what word you actually meant and make that correction. Um, it's pretty good, but it's not always right. So be careful with that. You can always run your spelling and grammar check as well. And you can also um, customize your autocorrects, which is pretty useful. Okay, text from file. So this is um, an object, right? Uh, but um, text then won't count as an object once it's inserted because it doesn't sit on top. It'll just be text, right? Um, we'll talk about objects in chapter two. So text from file is on the insert tab. You go to the text section, which is on the right um, and choose object and then text from file. And this allows you to take the content of a, another document, the closed document um, and insert that entirety of that text into a new document. Um, if you have the other document open already, obviously you can just control A, highlight the whole thing um, and copy and paste it. But text from file um, allows you to do that with files that are closed. Thesaurus. Oh, before I move on, this is something that I use. Um, if I've been doing a research project, I tend to have one document, which is like my notes on each of the sources. And I've kind of rearranged things and played a lot in that document. And then I have one, which is my citations um, and so on. And then when I go to create the final thing, I can use text from file and insert, for instance, my citations onto the final page. Um, so can be very useful. All right, the thesaurus. So a thesaurus is a book usually, but in this case, a database online and within the program. And it shows you words which mean the same or similar to the word that you've selected. So um, synonyms, right? If you right click on a word, um, or you can do this via the review tab, um, you can check uh, and get suggestions for other words and definitions. Um, the thing that I would be careful with is your connotation. So sometimes the words do not mean exactly the same thing. Usually they don't, otherwise we wouldn't have so many words for it, right? Um, so just be thoughtful about which word is actually the best choice for you um, and make sure that it doesn't change the meaning of uh, your overall sentence. But it is a really good tool, especially if you are writing about a topic and you're starting to feel like you're saying the same term over and over and over. Um, grabbing the thesaurus and finding a couple others that you can mix in is, is a good, uh, good practice um, so that you don't start feeling a little kooky. Okay, watermarks. So watermarks are um, can be text or it can be an image and it displays behind the text. It's usually fairly um, translucent and then text and whatever else goes on top of it. The purpose of a watermark is usually to indicate that something is official or unofficial. Um, so for instance, um, for my transcript, you know, if I want to download my transcript, I can do that straight from my college LMS. Um, but 
uh, it's going to say unofficial across it. So I can't then send that transcript out to like apply to a different university um, because it will say unofficial across it. But if I want the official one, I have to then order it directly from the university. Um, and it comes in like a closed envelope and stuff so no one can mess with it. Another example here would be when you get your school photos done or your kids get their school photos done and then you get those sample pictures that say sample across them. So it's like your face and it's like sample. Um, <laughs> and again, it's so that you need to um, buy it, right? So you can't just use the example one. Um, so copyright, um, whether something's official or not, um, copyright also, you'll see watermarks being used a lot online on apps like Instagram, where it's like image-based um, because then you can put your you know, logo or whatever in the corner. And then if someone shares your image, it still retains that information about who actually created the image in the first place. Um, you'll also see watermarks from apps. So like if you edit in an app and there's a little watermark on the bottom that has the name of the app, that would also again be a watermark. So in Word, it's usually behind the image or the, the text, um, but it's the same purpose as those image ones. Header and footer. So this is a format feature where in the margins, either at the top or the bottom of the page, you can put information. Um, there's three kind of columns that are pre-built in for you. Um, and you can either get to them by double clicking into either of the marginal spaces or um, doing an insert from uh, the objects group on the insert tab. Um, once you have the header footer open, you'll get an extra tab on the ribbon with um, fields that you can insert. So things like page number or um, document name, file name, uh, author name, um, whatever, <laughs> page number, I think I already said, date. Um, so different fields that you can insert automatically or you can do it yourself. Um, and you can then make other formatting choices about how it displays. So headers and footers, um, the real useful thing about this is it ties your document together. So it's obvious that all of those pages are part of the same thing. Um, I like to put headers and footers on with, you know, your name, the date. Um, if you're working for something or representing something, put the business name in there. Um, but page number is really the key because then if you're, for instance, handing in a resume, which has a cover letter and maybe a portfolio attached, you can put the header or footer in there so that they all have that kind of matching um, formatting, which makes a big difference to the, you know, kind of the professional uh, impression of the document, but also it just makes it easier to not lose anything and make sure you have the whole thing. So what's a document property? Now, when you are, most of the time, we're talking about the documents, we're talking about what it looks like, the actual content of the document when you're gonna read it or display it. Um, properties are elements that are saved with the document, but not in the document. Um, if you know the term metadata, kind of kind of metadata. Okay, so this can have things like when it was made, how long it's taken to create, how many times you edited it, how many words are in it, are there key terms used, where were you when you created it, who is the author, whose name is on the license for the program, um, did you use a template, so there's tons of information about the document that's saved with it, um, but is not actually something that you would see if you were to print it or view it on the screen. Um, so properties can be very useful, give all this extra information um, about the document. There's something called the document inspector, which you can get from the file tab. And this feature is basically it's designed to support the properties. Um, and so it goes through your document properties and it checks for anything that could be sensitive or personal information and allows you to remove it. So for instance, let's say you're uploading something somewhere, um, you could run your document inspector and make sure that it doesn't have a physical location. Maybe you don't wanna share your name so you can take your name out. Um, 
there's various things there. Um, so that's what that's for is to help you choose which, um, which properties uh, are saved with the document. And we have our accessibility checker. This is on the review tab. And what this does, really cool feature, honestly, it goes through and it checks the document to see whether um, an e-reader would be able to read it and also whether um, anyone with a visual impairment would be able to know what the content is. So for example, um, you'll go through your accessibility checker and maybe it will say your contrast between your text and your background is really low and it's hard to read. So you'll go fix that. Maybe you'll run it and it'll say um, you have these pictures, but there's no alt text. So there's no description of the picture. Um, and so then it'll give you the opportunity to add alt text or add a caption. Um, so it's quite intuitive. Um, and I do suggest if you're going to be publishing your work anywhere, um, even if it's just in your workplace, that you do run the accessibility checker. Um, first of all, it's inclusive. It's accessible be a good person, but also um, it is the law to be accessible as much as possible. So um, on top of that, though, it does just add extra information to the document, um, which is always a good thing. Okay, what's a template? So a template is a pre-designed, pre-formatted document that you can then shove your information into, okay? Um, that's what it is. <laughs> so it's a kind of preset, pre-organized. I'll show you a couple templates. Um, they can be for really any type of document, maybe a menu or a poster or um, an itinerary, whatever. Um, and you can basically access these things that have already been made by other people. Um, and then you can put your information into them. For ITC, please do not use templates uh, for your assignments. I want you to start from scratch and format the whole thing. Um, if you are in uh, Pearson, I don't really think it asks for any templates. I don't think it does. Um, but it, they're also already giving you um, documents to edit. So I'll show you templates um, in a moment. Then there's theme. So template is chosen before you start the document. Um, and then you put your information into it. The theme is design settings that you apply to the document once you've started the document. So on the design tab, um, and this can include things like color scheme, font family, um, layout, style sets, which we'll talk about more again in chapter two. Um, love it. Love themes. Um, I always uh, mess around with my theme colors and, and fonts and things um, because it's just a really fast way to apply some general settings across the entire document. It also has like paragraph spacing. Um, yeah, design tab. All right, before I switch over to show you in the program, the things we discussed, a couple hotkeys. First of all, you can download my hotkey cheat sheets from the Green Lab website. Uh, if you just search hotkey cheat sheet, it should come right up. Um, and it's also, of course, on the FAQ tags for um, ITC and, and things like that. Um, if you can't find it, let me know. There's one for Mac and there's one for Windows because there are uh, some differences. So these are the ones that I use the most um, related to this chapter material. So you've got save, control S. I use this all the time. If you don't have auto save turned on, basically every time you make a change that you don't want to lose, just control S on your keyboard. Control O will allow you to open file. So it'll open up the browser so you can locate or your file explorer, your finder, whatever uh, system you're on. Uh, undo and redo, I use all, a lot. Control Z, I use constantly because <laughs> um, that's my undo button. So if you do something and you don't like it or it's weird, just Control Z and you're good to go. Um, and then if you want to do it again, Control Y. Then we've got selecting the entirety of something. So selecting one word would be a double click. The line would be a triple click. And to select everything, it's Control A as in all. I use that a lot too. All right. In the next one, we're going to talk about text and paragraph formatting a little more, document appearance, um, things like styles and objects. 
So for now, I'm just going to jump into um, into my Word document, and we're going to go over some of this stuff. So let's just scroll up so I don't forget anything. Ta -da. Okay. So first of all, your insertion point, um, it's right here at the end of the word demo. You can see it flashing on the screen there. I'll zoom right in on it. Okay. And your insertion point moves when you click. So if you don't want it to move, if you want to keep your insertion point there, but you want to look at something else, you just have to scroll. Okay. Let's zoom back out. Word wrap, as I said, happens automatically. So when I got to the end of the line, it automatically goes to the next one. Characters are each individual unit of text. So you can see them here. If you go into your word count, which you can do from the bottom there, it tells you how many characters you've got um, with or without space characters. So just text characters or spaces as well. And it gives you this nice little breakdown, um, which I love. That um, your non-printing characters, let's turn them on. So they're right here. I'm on the home tab and I'm in the paragraph section. I'm just going to click this little button that looks like a backwards P. Now I'm on a Mac. So mine show up in blue. If you're on a windows, they tend to show up in the colors of the fonts around them. Um, so just keep that in mind. So as I zoom in here, you can see what kind of spacing I've used. You can see little dots in between each word, those are spacebar. You can see this backwards P symbol, that means I've pressed enter. If I were to ins uh, insert a tab, um, which I'll do here so that it doesn't indent everything, oops, then you get this little arrow. Tabs are really useful. Um, they are preset along the ribbon, as you can see, or along the ruler, sorry. Um, I wish I could make my ruler appear larger, but I can't. But if you look really closely, you can see these tiny little hanging down lines um, about every half an inch or so um, across. And you can customize those tab stops. That's what we do in the ITC um, dot leader step of the flyer. Um, but it just shows up as this little arrow, which is what I really wanted to show you. Okay. Um, special characters. So what we're going to do for that, I'm going to move my little head out of the way. Um, so I'm just going to go to the insert tab and it's over on the side here. It looks like this. It's the omega symbol. And if you're on a windows and you hover over this, you will be shown a menu of some common symbols that you might want to use. Um, I'm on a Mac, so it doesn't show me that preview. I just have to open it up. So I've clicked on advanced symbol and I'm gonna get this little window pane um, popping up in the center here in a second. There we go. And here we are. So we've got symbols and then we have special characters. So let's talk about special characters briefly. Um, as you can see, <laughs> opening quotes, closing things. Um, so you can choose which way they go. Um, a basic ellipsis, um, and you can also put in paragraph symbols and, and things like that. And you can see up here um, is those spaces and hyphens that have extra formatting attached, so non-breaking and so on. And then you can see there's hotkeys available over here. So you can add more hotkeys. You can do um, autocorrect. So it always, for instance, will do an M dash. Um, you can kind of customize it. In symbols, you'll see not only, I wish I could zoom in, unfortunately it, it doesn't get any bigger. So um, you might just wanna zoom in on the video, but you can see there's all of these different items. So there's letters from different alphabets, right? Like there's a thorn, um, is that a zeta? <laughs> Got a pie symbol. And then you also have some just images, right? I've got some arrow, I have a heart. Um, bunch of arrows going in different directions. There's like a little bird <laughs> in the corner, um, a whole bunch of stuff, someone talking. And then if you change the font, you will get other items. So like, let's put it to times, I guess. And then you can see all of the characters. So all the regular letters. Um, and then also uh, you got some fractions and all the letters with different accents on them. Um, 
if you use uh, wingdings, it's got to be down here somewhere. Um, oh, they put it at the top. <laughs> That's nice of them. Okay, so wingdings, if I click on wingdings, um, you can see even more images, right? There's a phone, a, a mailbox, a flag waving in the wind. So you've got tons of these things as well as just like little symbols and um, decor items as well. So really useful, uh, love it, have a little look and explore, especially when you want it to look pretty. So I'm just going to cancel that. I'm not going to insert one. Um, breaks. Okay. So breaks are inserted, as I said, either from the insert tab. I'm just going to zoom this out a little bit. Insert tab or from the layout tab. So on the insert tab over here, you see pages um, and you can do a blank page or a page break from here. If you go to layout um, and you go to breaks, you have a whole bunch of options. So you've got page break, which is just going to jump you to a new page, column, and then all of these different section breaks that will give you different formatting options. Um, play around with them. See how you like it. All right. Auto recover and auto save. So you can see up here in my quick access toolbar. Okay. Let's remember that terminology from the intro. Um, First of all, you can customize your quick access toolbar. I always have print on my word because that makes my life easier. You can always just do control P, um, undo, redo, save, and home, which takes me to the home page of Word so I can, you know, pick templates and things like that. My autosave is off because as aforementioned, it saves to your cloud account and I much prefer to save to my computer, um, but that's just personal preference. Now, if you're on a Windows, you will go to your file tab right here next to home. I'm on a Mac, so mine is up on the menu bar. Um, and then if I go down, I can check my properties, which we'll see in a second. Um, but what I'm going to do actually is going to go to the Word button. Then I'm going to click on Preferences. Um, it's just a little bit different than on the, the Windows where you just go to uh, File and then scroll down to the bottom. So you can see I've got all of my preferences here. And if I hop on into general, um, you can see kind of what we're looking at. So there's all sorts of options there, right? Dark mode, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's one, oops, there we go. Um, so accessibility, your view options, um, your editing options, and then of course your saving options. So if you go into save, you can decide whether you want backup copies, whether you want auto save, how often you want auto recover to go, um, and so on and so forth. So you can really make some decisions, um, which will then apply to all of your documents. Inserting text from file. So that's on the insert tab. Um, we're going to talk about these lovely um, objects uh, in chapter two. But for now, um, for now, uh, text from file is in this section, text, <laughs> unsurprisingly. If I make this a little wider um, and spread that section out, you can see there's text boxes, word art, um, drop cap, which is Delightful. I love drop caps. Um, and then you've got some fields and stuff. So it's this one here that says object. And then you just click down and choose text from file. It'll open up a pane with your file explorer or your finder. And then you can choose which file you'd like to insert. Um, while I'm here, a couple other things we went over. Um, we didn't talk about word art. We talked about uh, watermarks, which look similar. <laughs> the button looks similar anyway. Um, but here's header and footer. So while I'm here, let's have a look at these. So um, you can either choose from up here to jump into the header or footer, or you can double click in the area and it will open it for you like this. When you open it up, you will get um, the extra tab on the ribbon called header and footer. And you can see here, there's an option to add like page number, different fields. Um, and you can also decide how it displays and where it displays. Um, and you can also mess around a little bit with the margins. So I'm just going to put in a header as a little um, example. Actually, let's do footer. <laughs> so I'm going to click go to footer. Um, and so I'm going to put in uh, my name. Let's let's do a field. Let's 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 do a field. I'm going to click on field. And you have all these all these options here, address, date and time, um, 
so much stuff <laughs> um, that you can automatically pop in there. Um, and this will be with, you know, based on the, the content of your, of your work. So last saved by um, can be a useful one. Now I'm going to go uh, close that and just do what I would normally do, which is put my name on one side. Um, tab will jump you. So it's three sections, left, right, and center. It'll jump you to the next section. Um, and then I usually put in page number um, and you can decide where you want it to go. I'm going to, I'll put it on the right shore and uh, just say, okay. And then there it is. And then if I end up on a second page, so let's just close my header and footer and insert a break down the bottom. Oop. Okay, so there's my page break. Um, and I scroll down, there's my footer. It's already there for me. And the page number has updated, which is exactly what we want. I'm just gonna undo that page break. Okay. So we looked at header and footer, um, watermark and thesaurus. Okay, so let's look at watermarks first. This is on the design. Um, it's this one with the red A. My brain always gets <laughs> this icon and the word art icon confused because they're both the letter A turned to the side, but the watermark one's red and the other one's blue. So I need to fix my brain, I guess. Um, but here we are we're on the design tab with some of the other items that we've been talking about. So you've got your themes over here. Um, and you can see kind of the, the presets or you can um, look for one that you have saved on your computer. Um, and if you wanna get something other than the ones that are here, you choose it before you start um, your document. Or sorry, that doesn't make sense. You don't choose it before you start your document, <laughs> but you can uh, create your own. So up here, you can see ones that I've saved, that I've made and then saved. These were all PowerPoints, but it, you know, crossover between the programs. What I usually do in Word is simply mess with the color scheme. Um, so you can make custom ones. Uh, let's just pick uh, a violet for sure. Um, and then you can see all these styles are updating. You can choose your font families. Um, let's say I want everything to be, uh, let's just pick something that looks different. Um, so now you'll see all of these guys have updated to match that. These were already set to a font, so they um, didn't change, obviously, but you can make them. And then paragraph spacing, so you can make it compact. Um, you can make it relaxed, which is huge. <laughs> uh, so you can kind of decide on, um, or just default. Um, so you can decide on what you would like as an overall setting here. And we've got our watermark. So this is gonna go behind the text. I'm gonna choose a text option and I'll just choose one from the drop down list. Um, if you wanna change the text, you just have to type it in. So let's say draft and I'm gonna change the color. Um, because I've changed my theme colors, you can see them here, they look lovely. Let's go with this nice bluey purple and I'll make it diagonal. And right now it says it's not transparent at all. I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent and then say, okay. Oop. And this will be on every page behind the text. All right, so you can see it there. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's my themes and my design and my watermark thesaurus. Okay, let's show you this is thesaurus. So either we can go to review and on review, you're going to find your editor options. So um, it's thinking, here we go. So you've got your editor, your spell check, your thesaurus um, and your word count. Okay, so that's like your information there. So you can grab it. Um, I'm going to just open up the thesaurus by right clicking on a word. Now, a lot of this is in Latin, obviously. Um, so I'm just going to do uh, some of this English up the top. So let's right click on review and go down to synonyms. And you can see it's given me a whole bunch of options to choose from. Okay. And if I want to, I can also open up the thesaurus entirely. It'll open up a pane on the side here. And it gives you the different meanings of the word review and then uh, synonym examples for each. So if you're not sure which one to choose, go into the thesaurus properly because it does give you the different um, definitions so that you can really choose a, a good synonym. Um, <laughs> 
swat. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's the thesaurus. You can do this on any of your words. And if you just then click on it, it will um, update. So let's pick a different one. Uh, so review demo, let's say um, assessment demo. No, that doesn't make sense. I guess I could say revision demo like that. Um, sure, let's say revision. It's not really a direct uh, anything, but there we go. Um, so then you can kind of do it that way and click around and it'll change what word you're looking at, all of the options. Um, so again, if I just click on this and I want to change one, just grab one. Um, I don't know, let's say appraisal. That's just funny, but there we are. So now I have a new word. Just want to be thoughtful about which ones you're choosing because as I said, they all are a little bit different. Okay, I think the last thing to look at is the document properties and stuff. So first of all, accessibility check. Um, so I'm already on review tab and you'll see the accessibility checker right here. So if I click on this, it's gonna open up over here and it says that I have no issues, um, which is great <laughs> because there's, there's really nothing in here. Now, if I were to insert something, um, let me just very quickly insert an object, which again, we'll talk about properly. Um, next time in chapter two. Um, let me just pick a shape, I guess. Um, no, it's got to be a picture. Choose a picture. Um, stock images. So again, that's going to open over here. I'm going to pick one. And then just so that you can have an example of, of something that an accessibility check might reveal. So um, I'm just going to click on something on this first page. It's like a crown. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to insert it. It's going to appear where my insertion point was. Amazing. Um, and I get my extra tab and, and all that good stuff. So now if I run my accessibility check, um, it should give me more. Now, this is a stock image, so it might come with alt text, actually. Uh, view alt text. It does. It already has... Um, alt text in in there, which is why um, it didn't have an accessibility check. So not a great example from me, but hopefully <laughs> hopefully it makes sense. Um, I guess what I could show you is in my enrollment record, it's always telling me it's not accessible um, because it's just for me, right? It's, it's just my own records. Um, so it doesn't really need to be accessible for anybody else, but I'll show you the kind of feedback it gives me in Excel. So if I go to review, um, and then I say check accessibility, it's going to give me a whole bunch of problems that I have um, with the design and the layout and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, there you go. Warning, hard to read text contrast. Um, and it shows you where that will be. It'll highlight it so you can go in and um, make changes. Oh my goodness, look at all. <laughs> no object description for any of my charts, of course. Um, I've got a weird merged cell, apparently, a whole bunch of hard to read text. So there we go. Um, and then you can go through and, and fix it. Obviously, as I said, this file is literally just for me, um, just keeping track of my enrollment. But if I was going to share that with people, then uh, the accessibility would be a lot more relevant. Okay, the last thing that I want to look at here um, is document properties. So this, if you're on a Windows, you would find this in your file tab, um, then just scroll down and you'll find the button that says properties. Um, I think actually it's on the main page, kind of in the corner. Um, on a Mac, you click on file and then properties is down the bottom of the menu. And then here they are. So the summary is gonna have my name. Um, I can add things here if I want to. It shows me if I have a template. Um, I can check how long it is, how much content it has. Um, I can, yeah, see all the good stuff. So that's document properties, um, which you can add or subtract as desired. So the last thing, the very last thing is just to show you a template. So I'm going to open up the home page of Word. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that by clicking on the home button, actually. Oops. 
So here's my homepage. Um, at the top, you can see things that have been shared with me online. Here you can see uh, files that I've recently opened. Um, and then I can do new, recent, blah, blah, blah. So if I go into new, you'll see templates. Here they are. So there's calendars, uh, resumes, research papers. Um, the only time I would really encourage it would be like for an APA style or something because um, it's pre-formatted for you. But if we have a little search, let's say I wanted to make a menu, it's going to show me all of these menus that people have already created that I can plug my information into. The warning I have with this is, first of all, obviously copyright, um, just be thoughtful about that. But um, also it can be actually really difficult to change um, the amount of content in the the text. So um, let's just click on this guy here just as an example. So it's going to download the template for me. And then it should open in a second. There we go. So it's already formatted and there's already text, right? Um, it says add description. So let's say I want to do that. I want to add some content here. This one actually is pretty well done. It doesn't seem to be using tables. So in theory, you could um, increase the size here, but oftentimes they are using tables. So each thing is in its own little cell um, and that could be really difficult. You can see it comes with some styles all preset for it. Um, and of course you could play around with the styles and the colors. So for instance, let's say for some reason I didn't like green, who doesn't like green, but I'll just pretend I don't. Um, I don't know, maybe I like yellow. <laughs> Gosh, that looks terrible. Um, but there you go, it changes everything, right? So um, very useful, there's blue. Um, and then there's all my styles. I could also change my styles if I wanted to. Um, so there are ways to update templates, um, but I would prefer you just started from scratch as far as assignments in class. All right, I'm going to stop my share. That uh, I'm sure it was long, <laughs> but I really wanted to um, have a filmed version of the reviews. So the rest of them will be coming soon for the other chapters. Um, I hope that this was helpful, both the lecture portion and the demo. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're in Pearson and you want to check your understanding of this stuff, you can go to chapter one's uh, quizzes that would be in module five um no sorry module four we're in word and uh it's the ones with the orange pointy finger that's where i got these um kind of questions and concepts to review all right i hope this was helpful i will see you so uh so soon and uh yeah enjoy <laughs> happy word processing bye